So, hi, Lisa. We're here today to talk about the upcoming Domestic Violence uh, Workplace Training Day, which is called Demystifying Domestic Abuse in the Workplace. So I thought you're very welcome. So I thought we'd actually start uh, by by asking you to, I suppose, tell us about your background. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Catherine. Um, so my background is that I'm a former nurse and midwife originally. Um, I have been a business owner several times over and I've been a coach and trainer for the last seven years, uh, mainly in the areas of um, leadership, resilience, psychological safety, and also in the area of domestic abuse. So training um, and, and empowering employers to respond appropriately to their employees who may be experiencing domestic abuse and who may disclose that to the employer. So I cover a wide range like that of real leadership, real leadership topics, the real stuff that leaders face every day. Um, and that's what I do in, in my business now um, in, in one to one coaching and also in training I have a suite of training programs, including this one, the demystifying domestic abuse in the workplace um, training day. That's great. So just another question for you. What's your connection with uh, Changing Relations and who are they? Sure. Well, Changing Relations is an education and training company based in the UK, um, headed up by Lisa Davis. Um, and I came across them about 18 months ago when I attended a workplace webinar. Um, and I was just really struck by their approach. They're an arts based company. So they provide training for employers and workplaces and schools on lots of different areas, all related to changing relations, all related to um, how we relate to each other, how we support each other and empower each other in difficult, you know, around difficult topics like domestic abuse, like, um, you know, gender diversity around healthy relationships. They do really, really unique work and they have a really, really unique approach, which I absolutely loved. And I had never seen anything like it before. So um, we we basically connected and um, for the last 18 months, Lisa and I have been discussing and talking about how I could bring this approach to Ireland because um, it hasn't been brought here before, this particular training approach. And uh, I've been I've traveled over there twice um, uh, to, to work with Lisa and we've worked on an ongoing basis over the last 18 months. And um, and the reason that I wanted to bring it to Ireland was um, was because it's so unique. It You know, they they. Lisa is a trained teacher and educator, so she brings in all the models uh, and theories of how adults learn best into her training. And you, you can see that in the training that she delivers and um, the content that that she really addresses all the learning styles that that adults have and um, overcomes. She overcomes all the barriers that people have to learning, you know, including sitting still in the one in the one place. Uh, you know, PowerPoint slides day in, day out. Um, I'm delighted to say that this Taster Day uh, has no not one PowerPoint slide. It's a really unique training process. And having seen it myself, having experienced it myself and having worked with her on being able to be the facilitator and trainer for this uh, with this approach in Ireland, um, you know, I'm really confident that it is a very, very impactful approach and impactful in the way that people when they leave the day when they've left the, this workplace training they really really will have um a very unique insight um into domestic abuse in a very gentle way it's not an easy topic to talk about it's not an easy topic to undergo training on but this is a very gentle approach i find it's just my words i'm paraphrasing here this i find it a very gentle approach for a difficult subject and people leave really empowered um on not just how to respond, but how to spot domestic abuse in the workplace and take meaningful action that keeps everybody safe and um, and helps somebody along their journey to safety and autonomy. So um, so there, it's a fantastic company. I'm really delighted to be working with Lisa on this and really delighted to be bringing this training approach to Irish employers for the first time. Excellent. And, and of course, the UK, like say, has such a diverse um not not notwithstanding like they've you know that they, they have decades like say of diversity there so there's a lot of learning as well which you know would come from from the uk 
Um, just you were saying there about the particular uh, approach to the training day. Can you tell us more about that particular um, training approach on how the day might look? Yeah, sure. Um, so as I said, there isn't one single PowerPoint slide in it, which a lot of people would be delighted to hear. Um, the, the training day is divided into three sections. So the first section is titled Make, Do and Mend, and it's based on uh, work that Lisa did along with um, other associates in the area of domestic abuse in the local, in the Durham University as well, uh, the University of Northumbria. Um, and uh, it looks, it allows the participants to really empathize um, emotionally, really engage emotionally and uh, empathize and get fresh perspective that they would never have had before on what it means to be experiencing domestic abuse. So that's the first section of it. Uh, the second section then is really looking at how diverse domestic abuse is as an as an issue. It's it's a it's an equal opportunities issue, unfortunately, and many people um, assume that it's a certain type of person who experiences it, a certain somebody from a certain level of education, somebody from a certain background, a certain gender, and that's not the case. It it, it affects absolutely everybody, and so the second part of it is called us too. And it really gives um, really deep, profound insight into how this can affect absolutely anybody and how it affects the, the you know people in different contexts who find it even more difficult than than the rest of us say to speak up and to say and to disclose this is happening. Um, and of course, everybody who's experiencing domestic abuse is deserving of equal compassion and support and uh, and and appropriate response. So that's the second part of it, and then. The third part of it is how you how you apply this learning to your workplace. So this is where it really all comes together and how the participants can bring this back into the workplace, this, these insights um, and approaches and tips and techniques on what to do and what not to do, what to say and what not to say. Um, so uh, so that they so that they will respond appropriately in the moment because it's too late when somebody is coming to you to just to disclose this to say hang on a minute I just need to go and do a training day and I'll come back to you they really need to be ready to respond and know how to respond in the right way that keeps everybody safe and supports that employee so the day itself there's there's, there's a lot of moving around the room there's participate it's very participate participatory if I could say it there's group work there's discussion there's case studies um and it's all based around you know the arts um the arts approach that that Lisa has has designed and created. Uh, there are fantastic resources that go with that. There are workbooks that go with it as well that people can take away. Um, and it's it's ideally, I mean, we we deliver this in in companies, um, but th this particular day that that is coming up in in the days in October and November are essentially taster days for somebody from HR or learning and development in a company to come and sample the taster day themselves, um, leave with all the insights that that we do give, but then see how this could apply in their own, in the, you know, could they bring this training back into their own company and, and into the wider company and have more domestic abuse champions in the company who are all available at any moment for anybody who might 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 want to disclose um, that they're experiencing domestic abuse. So, so that's the format. Um, and uh, you know, like you know, training is difficult. It's it's tiring to undergo training. Um, but I have to say, of all the training I've ever experienced myself, this was one that I, I didn't leave at the end of the day exhausted. I left inspired, energetic, confident, in a gentle, quiet way. I, I could feel I felt calm that I would be if you know able to respond better myself. I mean, I mentioned that I was a, I'm a former nurse. I did come across domestic abuse in that in that um in that work and to be honest we weren't really trained on how to respond appropriately even even as healthcare professionals so i responded in the way that i res would respond to any patient disclosing something but it wasn't specific training um so i certainly you know even with my background i left with lots of insights that i hadn't known before so so that's that's the format of it so i can i can promise that it is it is a very gentle supportive training because given the prevalence of domestic abuse we have to assume that there are people in the room that will know somebody or may have experienced it themselves so even that is is catered for and looked after and accommodated for so um so it's a really really worthwhile investment of time it's only one day um but the the impact of it really could ripple out, I would say, without any 
um, hesitations that this is life-changing training and potentially life-saving training, um, without a doubt. Absolutely. And, you know, you touched on a number of points there, you know, including, um, you know, that uh, Lisa had um, done some work within Northumbria and, of course, North Northumbria University. And I would be a, a, a postgraduate of, of the university as well. And they are one of the leading respect, respected universities in the UK over in Newcastle. So the campus is is massive over there. Um, so it's yeah, I you know, and another point there, like you know, you were you were mentioning about um the diverse or the sort of neuroscience element there to the training. And you know, that's what you want. You don't want to walk away from training feeling exhausted. So again, like say with that that sort of neurodiverse diverse approach. Uh, in in training, it does leave somebody inspired and somebody motivated. All the things that we want, obviously, people to take away from training. Um, and and I suppose finally, just on 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 that particular uh, point there, before I move you on to the next uh, uh, section, but um, on on that you were mentioned there about how you know um, how great domestic violence or DV as we generally term it. Uh, is and of course um we we all know somebody you know who and and even people in that room you know um men women alike will may may have you know been or know somebody who has been impacted and of yeah. course Lee, you know i've been impacted because i'm a survivor of uh domestic uh abuse so again it's um a, as a hr professional um, I I have a great I I think it's absolutely brilliant you know that it is coming in and there is going to be recognised in the workplace and obviously leave provided because it is it is one of those you know um it's it's a very scary uh, time anybody you know and long term as well like say that yes. that would be right. so um moving on um how can someone find out more um you know, if our, our book, book the day. Yeah, sure. Anybody who is interested in finding out more, uh, please email me, lisa at aslancoaching.ie. You can see it at the bottom of my screen, I think. Um, so lisa at aslancoaching.ie. We can set up a call. I can discuss more with you, you and explain more. Um, we also have lots of posts. You and I have posts on our websites. Uh, we're out on LinkedIn as well. So we're, we're trying to get the word out. I would ask anybody who sees those posts also to share them, you know, with their colleagues um, in the company and in other companies as well. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Please email me. It's me at that email. I answer my emails within a few hours. Um, so, you, you know, I won't leave you long waiting for, for a response. And we'll, I'm very happy to set up a call with anybody to have a chat about it, um, you know, about how to book then, how to book your place on the day. The day, you know, there's not 100 people in the room. We keep the we keep the training groups small um, so that they get the, get the best experience from it. Um, and so that uh, so that they really leave with with so that they get a chance to discuss it and, and speak up and you know, ask questions and, and say what's on their mind. And of course, with a room of 100 or 200 people, you can't do that. So um, places are limited, but very, very worthwhile. So please do contact me, Lisa, at aslancoaching.ie. Perfect. Um, and and of course, um, as you mentioned there, you know, on LinkedIn, and we'll certainly share it out. Um, I'll certainly share it out on LinkedIn. And also as well, you know, we, we'll have it up on the fresh thinking website which is fresh thinking.ie um any final comments lisa um i suppose um yeah just to say i suppose again about the format is that this is an awareness and insights um day of course that's just the first step the next steps are then to put policies and procedures in place in the workplace so we do provide you know apart from the how do you apply this in your workplace how do you bring this back to your workplace there are signposts lots of signposts for the next steps so it isn't just a standalone day you know this kind of inspires you to take to take the next actions of course um and of course i know that you you are experienced in, in helping companies to, to design those policies, um, which of course are changing with the new legislation in Ireland coming in uh, to give um, employees uh, the statutory right to paid domestic violence leave, which is coming in in autumn. Um, so, um, so I suppose my final thought would be again to repeat, reiterate that this could be this is life changing and could be life uh, saving. 
Um, and for employers, my message to employers is to remember that, you know, you're a crucial lifeline to somebody who's experiencing domestic abuse. I don't think many employers really realize how important they are in, in that role. Um, because the workplace often is the only safe place that a person has in their life. Uh, obviously, there's the whole, you know, financial security of having a job and having some vision of being able to to escape and, and get to a life of safety. Um, it doesn't, co- you know, some of the tips and techniques that we give for, to employers, they don't cost anything or not much to do. They're very easy to implement. Um, and I really would encourage employers to step back and take a deep breath and recognize that they are the lifeline. If somebody's uh, performance was great before and has suddenly changed, you know, they're in a new relationship and there's different signs like that. Please don't discipline them. Please have a little thought about what might be causing that in the background. Um, there are very simple ways that you can support employees that don't mean you have to be a counsellor. You don't have to be the guards. You don't have to, you know, jump in and be be the first responders. You can be the manager, be the manager, but there's lots of ways that you can support as a manager. Um, and, you know, my my own tagline in my business is be the leader people can't wait to work for. How on earth, you know, could you imagine anybody leaving? Nobody would leave an employer who has supported them on their journey to safety and autonomy. That would generate such loyalty in that person. You would have a, 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 a an engaged, motivated employee for life if you support them on that journey to safety and autonomy. Um so there's lots of business reasons. There's lots of moral reasons why it's right to support support anybody who's experiencing domestic abuse, um, and not just to not just to respond if they disclose, but to watch out for it and you know let them know that you're supporting them even until they're ready to disclose. So I that's that's I think that's my would be my final my final line would be please remember that you are the lifeline. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and again, it's something, you know, that's going to affect all employers out there, um, you know, particularly small ones. The, the larger ones will have the resources, will have, um, you know, will will generally have the insights, um, the resources, et cetera. But it's the smaller employers as well that obviously need to be up to speed with this, who may not have, like, say, the the know-how, uh, et cetera. So this is a great opportunity uh, for 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 everyone. Yes. Um, you know, definitely a great opportunity. And also as well, you were mentioning there about the workplace, you know, and how it's sort of domestic violence, you know, um, like your work, your work, your uh your work life balance. So if you think about remote working and you think about, you know, a lot of and I mean Ireland is in the lead now on remote working. So again, there's a Again, there's a a great um, reason, another reason why uh, this is very, very important, because if somebody is experiencing domestic abuse, they're in and they're they're working remotely. It means they're actually in a war zone, you know, and and that could be very impactful. And and again, I suppose, you know, I mean, we could talk forever on this and we don't really have the time to do that, I know. Uh, But effectively work workplace you know uh workplace stuff is always built into the uh you know into the the home okay now we have the home spilling into the workplace even though it's happened but now like say it's being recognized and that could you know for i suppose from our own perspective and speaking from a hr you know and also as well like say my experience in employment law um there is there is that potential there for a lot of a lot more claims going into the Workplace Relations Commission, you know, and that would be uh, from obviously breaches of the particular legislation coming in and in, in the autumn, but also other, you know, unfair dismissals and um, the discrimination under the Equality Acts, etc. So there's a lot there, like say a lot of reasons why, obviously. Um, Obviously, employers need to be up to speed and need to go and listen to yourself and Lisa on on this great opportunity, because I believe Lisa is going to uh, come over to yes. that event. That's right. Yes. Yeah. We're... Yeah. Excellent. Well, look, I'd like to uh, wish you obviously, obviously, we're supporting you in this uh, journey and um, wish, like, say yourself and Lisa, you know, every success. Um, and of course success to us all yeah. um, 
But um, ju just to, to wrap up there, um, again, just repeating there that if, if you need to get in touch um, or you need to find out more, you know, you can do so there across LinkedIn, across the website um, and obviously by contacting Lisa. Um, so today's um, chat, today's interview there uh, with Lisa was brought to you uh, by FG Consultants. Um, and we look forward to sharing more insights in the future. Fantastic. Thanks, Catherine.